Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we'll be actually doing some questions on motion right so we're going to do motion in a straight line as well as motion from free fall right so let's go so question one it says a car accelerates from 10 meters per second to 25 meters per second in six seconds what's the acceleration right so first we're given the final velocity and the initial velocity and we're given time and it's asked us to find acceleration which is a so therefore we can use a equals v minus u over t the v there is a final velocity final velocity is 25 the initial u which is 10 over the time 6 and we get 2.5 meters per second squared so that was an easy one right so let's take it from there question 2 a world-class printer can burst out of the blocks to essentially to a speed of about 11.5 meters per second in the first 15 minutes of the race. What's the average acceleration of this printer and how long does it take for her to reach that speed? All right, so this is a two-part question. The first part is saying what is her speed, what's her acceleration, sorry, for the first 15 minutes of the race, all right? So one, she starts from the block means that she started from rest. So that means u is zero, right? And it says that she reached a speed of 11.5 meters per second. So 11.5 meters per second would be the final velocity. And it gives us the distance that she did this in, which was 50 minutes, right? So that means we have u, v, and s, and we're asked to find a. So that means we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Right? Because we don't have any time, so we can't use any other equation because all those other equations require time. So V is 11.5, we square that, equals U is 0 because she started from rest, U is 0 squared, and plus 2A, which we want to find, times the distance S, which is 15. Right? So we get 30A equals 132.25, so to get A we divide both sides by 30, and we get 4.41 meters per second squared. All right, so that's the first part of the question. Now the second part says, how long did she took to get to that actual distance, right? So we have the acceleration now, we have u, v, we also have s. So we can use s equals ut plus half at squared, or we can just use the simple one here that says t equals v minus u over a, right? So we have V, which is 11.5, U, again, shasted from rest, so it's zero, over the acceleration which just found to be 4.41. So that means we have T equals 11.5 over 4.41, so T is 2.61 seconds. All right? All right, so let's go now to question three. A person throws a ball upwards in the air with an initial velocity of 50 meters per second Calculate part A, how high it goes. All right. So this now is a free fall question. All right. So free fall, the important thing to remember is that the acceleration of any object on the free fall is always gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81 or 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. So because the object is falling, all right, the only reason why it's falling is because of gravity. So this is a free fall question, so let's use that. All right, so the question gives us the initial, which is u, which is 15, all right? So it was thrown up, initially we have 15 meters per second, all right? And we are asked to find how high it went, all right? So that means we need to find distance, all right? Now, the thing to note about free fall as well is that when something is thrown up, when it reached the maximum height, right? Then that means that velocity there is zero because when you reach the maximum height it's going to stop before it starts to fall so the maximum height there is zero velocity right so we have v as well from this question which says that it's zero so we have u and v we also have a right because remember it's always 9.8 right but the thing is we need to know if it's a acceleration positive a or it's a deceleration negative a right so because it's moving from 15 to zero, 
So it's moving, it's decreasing in speed, so decreasing means it's decelerating, so it's a negative 9.8. So we can use v squared equal u squared plus 2as, right? So the v is 0, because it's going to stop at the maximum, and u is 15. And a is a negative 9.8, because it's slowing down from 15 to 0, right? And then we need to find s, so we get negative 225 which is 15 squared, and we carry it over to the left side, so it becomes negative, and then we have 2 times 9.8, negative 9.8, we get negative 19.6 s, and we divide both sides by negative 9.6, 19.6, sorry, and we get s to be 11.48 meters. All right, so that's part A. Part B says, how long does the ball, how long the ball is in the air before it comes back to his hand? Right? So an important part of this question is that in free fall, the time it takes to go from the point of projection to the maximum is also equal to the time from the maximum back to that same point. Right? So all we're going to do now is to find this, the time it took to go up and then we multiply it by 2 because that would be to go up and to come back down to that same point. Right? So we have... Remember from the question, we have V, we have U, we have A, right? So we can find T, which is T equal V minus U over A. The V there is zero, final, because it's going to the top zero, minus initial, started off with 15 over, and this time again, because it's slowing down, it's negative 9.8, so we have negative 15 over negative 9.8, negative cancel each other out, so we be back with 1.53 seconds, right? So that's the time it took to go just up to the top, but it asks you to come back to the original position. So we multiply that by 2 and we get 3.06 seconds. All right, so let's look at question 4 now. It says a stone is thrown vertically up with a speed of 12 meters per second from the edge of a cliff, which is 75 meters high. Calculate how much later does it reach the bottom of the cliff. Right? So this one now is a little bit technical, right? Because it's not asking you to go up and come back to the cliff. It's asking you to go up and go down to the bottom of the cliff, right? So we can simplify the, the equation, right? Which is S equals UT plus AT squared, right? So the S here, right, we're going to use is a negative 75. The negative, because it's going to be displaced, Right? So we're looking at displacement. So it went up and came back down to the original top of the cliff. Right? So that means it was displaced zero. So it went up and came back down to the top of the, the cliff. Right? So displacement there is zero. So the only displacement that this object really had was from the top of the cliff to the bottom of the cliff. And the reason why it's negative is because it's going down. Right? So it's negative 7.75 equals u started off with a speed of 12 t because we don't know the t u that's what we're going to find minus 0 0.5 which is a half a 9.8 t t squared right so the reason why we have negative there is because it is slowing down right so it's the acceleration is slowing down right well, the object, sorry, is slowing down. So that's why we have the negative there. So we put everything on one side, right? So we simplify. So a half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared, right? And we have 12 t and we have the 75. So if we take over the right-hand side to the left-hand side, the negative 4.9 t squared becomes positive. The positive 12 t becomes negative and we still have the negative 75 already on the left side. And all of that equals zero, because we need to resemble it to a quadratic equation, right? So because of quadratic equation, we can use the equation that says minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? So we substitute all those numbers there. So remember the equation starts with saying minus b, but in this case, b is a negative 12. So it would be minus minus 12, All right? So that becomes a positive 12 plus or minus the square root of 
b squared negative 12 squared which is 144 minus 4a which is 4.9 times c which is negative 75 all right so that negative 4 that negative and the negative 75 will actually become a positive number so you add and then you find a square root which gives you 40.17 all right and then we look at the positive part of the equation now the reason why we don't look at the negative is because 12 minus 40.17 gives us a negative number and a negative number will give us a negative time right and we don't have negative time because time is a scalar quantity so it's always a positive number right so we use the positive side of the equation so it's 12 plus 40.17 divided by 9.8 and we get 5.32 seconds all right part b what is its speed just before hitting so that's just before hitting the ground what's the speed that it has so that's asking you to find v which is your final velocity right we remember we have u which is 12 right and we have the time which we just found to be 5.32 and we have acceleration again which is negative 9.8 so we can use v equals u plus a t so it, u is 12 a is negative 9 and t is the 5.32 and we get v to be negative 40.14 meters per second right and the negative there shows us because it's going down right so right at the bottom of the cliff then it will have a negative because it's going down so velocity going down is normally abbreviated with a negative to show the direction that it's actually going down instead of going up all right so the last part of question four says what total distance did it travel right so that's asking us to find s all right so the s that we're going to find is not the height of the cliff because we already know that right so the height of the cliff is 75 now we need to know from the top of the cliff to when it went to the maximum height and then back to the top of the cliff all right so from top cliff to the height to the maximum height we find that and then we multiply by 2 to get from going up and come back down to that then we add it to the 75 height of the cliff right so therefore we can we have v which is zero because it's going to the maximum height we have u where it started with 12 right and we have a because it's slowing down from 12 to zero so it's negative 9.8 right so we find s so use v, v squared equal u squared plus 2as so v is zero zero squared plus equals 12 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times s right so we get 12 squared is 144 we take it over to the next side so that's why it's negative 1.144 there equals 2 times negative 9.8 is negative 19.6 times s so we divide both sides by negative 19.6 and we get 7.3435 meters right so what that is saying is that the height the distance from the where it was thrown to the maximum height of the to the maximum height that it attained is 7.35 we multiply that by 2 right which we get 14.70 right and then we add that to the 75 to get our final answer now the final question would be question 5 so it says a stone is dropped from the roof of a building two seconds later two seconds after that a second stone was thrown down with an initial speed of 30 meters per second and it is observed that the two stones land at the same time so we have two stones one was dropped so it starts with zero right and have two seconds later a second one was thrown down and because thrown down it had a velocity of 30 meters per second but at the bottom they both fell the same time Right? So we're asked to find part A. How long did it took the first ball to reach the ground? So for both stone, right, the common thing between both is that they traveled the same distance because they went from the top of the roof to the bottom, right? So the distance S is the same. So that means we can equate S1 to S2, and we have S equal UT plus half AT squared. Right? So S1 is equal to S2. So for S1, 
it's u which is 0 times t plus half 0 0.5 times a which is 9.8 and why is 9.8 because it's starting from 0 and it's going to accelerate when it's going down right so it's a positive a right so it's 9.8 t squared so that's for stone 1 right then stone stone 2 now it actually started with 30 so u now is 30 right and the t here is t minus 2 right so the reason why it's minus 2 is because it started two seconds after the first one was thrown so whatever t was for the first one we're minusing 2 from it right so it's t minus 2 right plus 0 0.5 half a 9.8 again because even though it started with 30 it's going to actually still accelerate going down right so 9.8 t squared so remember t would be t minus 2 because it's two seconds later so t minus 2 and we all square that right so 0 t is 0 half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared so that's the left side and that's equal to now 30 times t is 30 t 30 times negative 2 negative 60 right plus half of 9.8 is 4.9 and then we expand that bracket t minus 2 all squared so we get t squared plus minus 4t plus 4 right then we put everything on one side right or first we can expand the bracket there so they expand 4.9 into t squared which is 4.9 t squared 4.9 in times negative 40 and we get 19 negative 19.6 t and then 4.9 times plus 4 right which is 19.6 right so now we have all things expanded we can group our like terms together so the four, the four the 4.9 t squared they are common on both sides right so we can cancel them out, right? Or if we, even if we take over the left one to the right one, it becomes negative and the right one is positive. So we get zero from both, adding both, right? And we have 30t and we have a negative 19.6t. So it's 30 minus 19.6, which we get 10.4t. And we have negative 60 plus 19.6. So it's basically negative six plus 19.6 and we get a negative 40.4. Right, so we take over the negative 40.4 becomes positive 40.4. We divide both sides by by 10.4, and we get t to be 3.88 seconds. Right, so the first stone had a time from top to bottom of 3.88. All right, final question is what are the speed of the two stones just before they hit? Right, so we're just going to find the first one, no, the second one, sorry, so of, this, of the second stone, it should be second stone. All right, so the second part, all right, so the second part says, what is the speed of the second stone just before it hits the ground, right? So. So we have v equals u plus a t because we're finding v, the final velocity, right? Remember u, it started because it's thrown down, started at 30, right? A, it's accelerating, so it's positive 9.8. And t, remember for the second, it's two seconds later, right? So if the first stone was 3.88, then the time it took for the second stone would be 3.88 minus 2, right? So we have 30 plus 9.8 times 1.88, which we get 18.42, right? We add 30 plus 18.42, and we get 48.42 meters per second, right? So that's it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you understand something from today. See you next time.